Casual fans may be surprised to find out a crew chief's most valuable tool in the pits has become the laptop computer. Oftentimes, it's not the racer with the most horsepower who finds their way to the winner's circle. It's the racer whose team and crew was able to interpret data and make the correct changes to the vehicle to apply that power the most efficiently. That's why having an experienced crew chief who knows how to analyze and interpret the data and make changes accordingly, like the great Don DJ Johnson, who you see here, who has more than 100 event wins to his credit, is so vitally important. Racers of yesteryear could only dream of this technology. Data logging really started to show up in drag racing in the early 80s when pioneers like Kenny Bernstein and Jim Head started to introduce the technology. Back then, you could get 32 different channels of data. Now you can get much, much more and make many different tuning calls because of it. We caught up with Ricky House out of Team Magic Dry. He's the Nitro Shark out of Texas with our resident Nitro Harley expert, Michael Beland, to give us a lesson on what has transformed the sport of drag racing, data logging. It truly is fascinating. Stay with us, leave your comments on this video. It's educational. Motorcycle drag racing fans, Nitro Harley fans, get ready because we're gonna take you inside the sport and learn about data acquisition. It is so important. Not only must you be mechanically inclined to be on one of these teams and be a driver, you better be savvy with a laptop, know how to interpret the data, and make the changes. Mike, you can explain better than anybody. You've been there, done that. Take me inside data acquisition. Every lap on these bikes, there's over 100. There's over 100 adjustments we can do to make these bikes go down the track and missing it by that much is the difference between smoking the tire or running a world record pass. There's over, some guys have 18 to 20 channels of data coming off this bike. After the run, you pull the SD card out, you go in the trail and you start reading what it says. Let's take a look inside and see what's going on. Before we even do that, where's the SD card and where is it's the data? It's completely hidden on this bike. It's hidden on this bike, okay. So they'll pull an SD but, card out. You Typically, what, what area is it in? Somewhere in here? Underneath the tray in the back. Gotcha. So here, you'll have battery voltage, you'll have exhaust gas temperature over here, right. right on the head, exhaust gas temperature, you'll have clutch slippage, there's a drive shaft RPM, you'll have a clutch RPM, you'll have an output shaft RPM, you'll have an RPM RPM from your crankshaft. So that's the reason why there's so many wires on these that's bikes, right? look like the space shuttle. <laughs> now let's go inside and see what it looks like when you pull it out. This is the trailer of the Nitro Shark himself, Ricky House. Here we are with Ricky and his crew chief. Thanks for having us, guys. Hey. Let's see, what do we got here? What are we doing? So we come in, we take the SD card, plug it in the laptop. And this is gonna tell us what happened on the run after we're done with it. Wow. So these guys go in, interpret this data, look and see what happens. Each line, each channel is a different color. So you have cylinder pressure, you have RPM, you have dry shaft speed. What I've got here is I've got the I always try to go off the engine RPM and I use pump pressure, so like the pump pressure I've got. Sure. So like right here, it went out and smoked the tire. You can see when I hit the throttle right here, pump pressure jumped up right here and it was going. But what happened was it tried, it tried the tire, the tire, it spun the tire. So naturally when it spun, the engine RPM went up, so I shut it off. This is just valuable key now, information. Here was a, I think we run like a 39 or a 40. The in, it hit the throttle, pump pressure's up, goes all the way across, and then the engine comes up, and then it stays up, and then as the clutch is coming in, it's trying to drag the motor down right here. And there's actually a bump in the track right here. You can see it when I go. The tunnel. The tunnel there, it's got a bump. This, the wheel's trying to spin here, and there's a hump in the track, actually a couple of them. And then when the so that's actually the drive shaft RPM watching the yeah. wheel spinning. As he gets set to take on point leader Bo Lane. Yeah, 
I was wondering, what are the different colors? With when, when it shifts, well, that's why I can keep up. Like, okay. Like the blue I just put on there is a clutch RPM. That's the clutch RPM. Yeah, the clutch running up there. Then there's a bump in the track, the wheel, the clutch. Actually, I'm surprised the engine RPM on a couple of runs it spiked way up. Which one's engine RPM? Uh, the engine RPM is this green line right Green here. line, green okay. Line. Don't, don't wow. Ship transmission, then it'll, it'll jerk the clutch down. And you, on this one, it's actually pretty good because it really the RPM really didn't drop, which is I don't like it to drop too much when it's rough on the top end of the rods. So when you guys come back and you're in a crunch for time and you only have a short period to look at this data, let's say you just won the semis, you're going to the final, got to get to work. What are the most important things you're looking for right away? Right away, well, one of them is exhaust temperature. Where's the exhaust temperature? Well, the exhaust temperature is right here. This Line. And why is that so important? Well, I want to make sure, like, right here they got off from the start, but I try to keep them within a couple of hundred degrees. And normally, like, these are pretty good. Normally, I can get them dead on. And, like, this run, it went down. Plus, the run was over with. We've been in trouble all weekend. Like, this purple line here, that's where I shut it off. But on some of the runs, they've been dropping off back here. What happens is I put too much fuel to it or it's too fat. It puts the spark plug out and drops the hole. Gotcha. And it puts it slows down. So. Wow. Invaluable, huh? That's why old... you can see, uh, sometimes you can see a decent run, but the mile prior is only like 200 or 190 because we dropped the hole and it, just, it slowed the bike down that quick. Sure. It, lost, you know. it used to be notebooks and pens and papers and keeping yeah. track of everything and weather. And now it's everything's computerized. You save the run in a file with date, track conditions, density, altitude. So you can go back to your old files and see what you did last year or the year before at the track. Sure. And so when invaluable tuning tool. When you have a field that's this tight and everybody's got top-notch equipment, everybody's a great rider, everybody has a great crew chief, it probably, sometimes it comes down to who has the data, right? Well, it does. And know? the track. And the track. It's who the can track. read the track, right? No, this, this week, I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean we, you know, we all struggle. I watched Doug over there. I mean, they were number eight. They're on the bump spot to the last round, you know. I mean, we all get our moments. But, you know, last two years here, for some reason, I mean, I ran good everywhere. And in the last two years, I didn't even qualify here. Wow. I mean, didn't make the show. Uh, I'm just happy we made the show. That's Even great. Six, but, That's great. You know. I'm sure you could just look at that data for hours, right, and analyze everything. And Mike was telling us 100 different adjustments you could make on that oh, motorcycle. Yeah. Huh? And there's different, I mean, there's there's different combinations. You know, we, you know, we've got to experiment. How about as a crew chief over here? I mean, what's how difficult is, is it for you to quickly look at this data and determine what you need to do? I let Ricky look at that. I take care of the bike outside while he's doing that. Okay. So, so Ricky, you being the veteran, you're you're making the tuning calls yeah, as well? I'm, I'm about like a Tim Wilkerson in a way, you know? Okay. <laughs> well, I notice in different teams there's different relationships. Sometimes right. crew chief makes the call. Sometimes well, it's a collaboration. Well, right now is, you know, I, I mean, I'll, 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 if I want to do something, I'll talk to Mark about it, and I'll try to explain to him. Wow. Why I want to do it? You know what I mean, I just want to get a second opinion on it. And, and sometimes remember, something as small as three grams of weight on the clutch can make the difference between smoking the tire or running a world record pass. So always remember that. It can be the tiniest change makes the bike well, even, jump. Even the engine RPM at the start line can change everything. You want to have the same engine RPM. You know, if you go out one time and it's low, or go one time it's high, it's going to change everything. And people can interpret the data differently, right? Did Mark maybe ever make a suggestion to you? You said, no, nah, it's not going to work. And then you come back and say, oh, man, I should have listened to you. Well, we, we've done that a lot. <laughs> Mark's <laughs> laughing over there. Has that happened before? Yeah, yeah. And vice versa, I'm sure, right? Sometimes you would say, well, I think that's what we need to do. And we do it ass backwards. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually not racing the guy the the road, You're racing the track. Man, you know, I, sure. I can actually, you know, believe it or not, I can go that motorcycle and sometimes... I mean, I can tell, I mean, it's never a slug in a sense, but there's been times I felt like I want to jump off and push it and get it going again, you know, but. Sure. I mean, I can just, I got that, I just, I can, I can tell. Yeah. But then there's runs that didn't feel good, and man, like I got down in Florida, I mean, it was an all right run. They come back and tell me it was 620 flat, fastest I've ever been, so. Smooth. It's amazing. Smooth, smooth. And Mike, you were telling me a great story, a relationship you had with DJ a couple years ago. He would put the tune in it, and he'd tell you things like, Hold on, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Pay attention around 800 feet, right? And pay attention, he did, all the way to the winner's circle for a big victory. 
I was really new and uh, we were at this track and it was hot and greasy and we were watching the top fuel cars go before us and they were having problems about 800 feet and I'm new and I'm like oh that's cool I love watching these cars go and uh, he said hey at 800 feet because he knows I'm a cautious rider I'll turn the bike off if anything weird happens because I don't want to spend the money on the motor so he said about 800 feet is going to do something weird stay in it and what was happening is at 800 feet it was spinning the tire and the front end was bouncing up and down like a porpoise. And you were like, what the heck but is going only, on, it's right? I hold it on, so I held it on. I ran a 647 at over 220 something miles per hour. And I had low time and high speed of the day on a hot day. <laughs> it was really cool. We were Q3 on a Friday. And uh, it's his experience. He's never ridden one, but it's his experience of reading the track. Like Ricky said, no one was going to happen down the track to make adjustments to the bike. Amazing. I think this is the side of drag racing that a lot of people don't get, don't understand. They, they got to realize it's more than just turning wrenches out here, isn't it? Well, one thing I also want to make a point of people saying that don't know the sport is when I have a bad pass, they think it's me. I didn't drive the bike properly. But it actually, it all starts right here in this computer room and making the adjustments on the bike. Because as a rider, all my job is to cut the light and make that bike go straight down the track. All the tuning happens here. Because we know you can have all the power in the world, but if you can't get it to the racetrack, what good is it, right? You gotta get it to the track, you gotta get it at the right time. That's awesome. Last thing for you, what adjustments have you made this weekend to give us an example of some of the changes you made based on the data? Well, we, well, actually we changed, coming to this race, whatever I did in the last couple of years, we did not, we did not use. <laughs> we, to be honest with you, we actually used data off of last weekend at Topeka. Okay, similar conditions? I've been watching and it's, it's getting there now because the air is really not that good right now. But I mean, it's you know it's been over there it's been 38, 4100 foot, and over here it's been 27. But today it's like 39, 40 something more ago. So it's sure, good. we can explain that a little bit. We're talking about the air. He says 38, 3900. That's called a density altitude, a corrected altitude. Corrected altitude. We use a formula to tell us how many water grains are in the air, what the humidity is, the temperatures, the sun beating on the track. All comes into formula. It's a number. So we can adjust the power on the bike. Excellent. Well, guys, th this has been so informative. Thank you, and and good luck. I mean, this is real. This is you can tell this is a sport that just sucks you in because if you love analyzing data, there's there's. I bet you look up at the ceiling when you're trying to go to bed, all you guys, and think about some of this stuff and how to make these bikes go faster, huh? Oh yeah. I mean, I I wake up. I mean, I wake up middle of the night sometimes, and I try to get my thinking mode. And, I mean, sometimes I'll. Getting a bit of stubble, and sometimes I'll figure it out while I'm sleeping. <laughs> How about that, Mike? You ever figure anything out while you're sleeping? Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you guys, and good luck to you. So, there's your lesson, cycledrag.com, on data acquisition. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you are subscribed to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Make sure you like cycledrag.com on Facebook. Leave us a comment if you have any experience with data acquisition, or if you have any questions, we'll try to get it answered. But Again, the point of this video, there's a whole lot more to drag racing than just turning wrenches and being mechanically inclined. You better be a little computer savvy as well, and you better be able to think outside the box and analyze data. It's what it takes, and oftentimes it will dictate who's holding that Wally or championship trophy at the end. Thanks so much, guys. Again, hope you're enjoying these videos. Leave me your feedback. Subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. And make sure you like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. The shrewd analysis and application of this information benefited Ricky House on this particular weekend as he qualified for one of the toughest fields in Nitro Harley history. The know-how of this veteran from Texas has made him a threat to win at any given race. In conclusion, data logging and data acquisition has become the norm in drag racing. The analysis of sensor-based information is paramount and oftentimes separates winners and losers. It's like Michael Beland said in this video, if you see a bad run, oftentimes it's not the rider's fault, just like a record run is not always the rider's doing. The rider is a part of that, but the good tune-ups, the record runs, they all start back in the trailer when that SD card is pulled and the data is interpreted, especially when you're dealing with a fuel as volatile as nitromethane. You better make sure that your tune is on point because you know the best racers in the world will bring the smartest and brightest minds to the track to try to get ahead of the competition. Every single racer in the field uses this technology 
It was in use when Takishi Shigematsu went an all-time best 602 on his supercharged bike. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave us your questions, your comments. Subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube, and please make sure you are subscribed to CycleDrag.com on Facebook. Share this channel with some friends. Let's keep it growing. Thank you guys for all the positivity.